Hello, I'm Janet. I'm Ashley. And I'm Amber. And we are two girls, two girls and a bottle, and a bottle of, wine. of wine. Because <laughs> what are you doing, Ashley? <laughs> <laughs> Men like boobs. And girls like wine. I thought there was we a delay really on my end, so I was like, I'm not going to say that part. And obviously and just like, it's just a mental <laughs> delay on Ashley's part. <laughs> well, no, I feel like I'm I feel like I'm the same as Janet. That's why I, that's why normally I feel like me and Janet are like on the same timing and then Amber's delayed. But. Oh, see, I hear Janet and I on the same timing and you're delayed. <laughs> so I oh, just weird. took myself out and you guys were <laughs> totally not on the same timing. Oh, oh goodness. Well, we are back with the two girls and a bottle of wine and it it's a beautiful day outside. I am it thankful is. for spring when it actually springs. Yes. Yep. This last weekend, we um, brought out our our spring summer furniture in our backyard, and today Steve was installing a, a flagpole in the front yard, and it just feels great. That's cool. Good. <laughs> yeah, you- no, it's it's really nice out. I pulled weeds yesterday. That was fun. Ooh. Not so fun. It was like a five by five area, and I spent thirty minutes on it, and that's all I got. Because <laughs> our yard is like all weeds right now. Mm. Dandelions. Yes, they are crazy. How do you get rid of them? You have to get them by the root. Yeah, we have this little like, it looks like a really long bent um, uh, screwdriver, mm-hmm. like flathead screwdriver. Yeah, with the little prongs got, like, at the end. Fork. Yeah, Yeah, where you put it in and dig it. My grandmother used to be so good about getting all of her dandelions, and she had a massive yard, like probably six times the size of our backyard. And me, I just look at them and go, oh, they're so ugly. Well, apparently, <laughs> apparently the trick is that you grow the grass in heavy enough that it won't let the weeds in. We are not at that point yet. So, Aww. Hey, hey, Piper. <laughs> we got Piper as a special guest. Hi, Piper. Yeah, we have Piper as a special guest because her dad is in home to take care of her and she knows I'm in here. Oh. <laughs> Nick bashing starts early. Yeah. yeah. So speaking of Nick, he, he took an adventure yeah. to his friend's house. Yeah. And so, you wanted to tell us about it. Uh, him and his friend Jim, they do like a weekly bromance date where they get together every week and they drink a shit ton of alcohol and act like I don't understand that that's what happens. <laughs> and we really only have a drink or two, but really what they do is they have two huge drinks and mo- and multiple shots. Mm. And then he likes to pretend. They all pretend that I don't know that this happens. Because then also Nick comes home. So he has to drive home, by the way. And oh. he comes into the house and you can tell that he's clearly intoxicated, but denies it every single time. Nick, you shouldn't be driving. He has, like, very telltale signs of when he's drunk. But he still gets – he gets so mad when I'm like, dude, you're wasted. No. So, anyway. Maybe because he feels guilty about driving. Yeah, he should. Why don't you drop him off and pick him up? Oh, no. I've tried that before. He won't won't do it. I've even told him just to stay at gyms. Why don't you just spend the night at gyms? It'll be fine. You can wake up, go to work in the morning – or maybe you guys meet on Friday night so that way you don't have to worry about Saturday. I've offered many options. <sighs> but no. Supportive wife. So last night, because Piper so Piper was sick last night, so I'm like text messaging him because I was freaking out. Sorry. What is that noise? Sorry. <laughs> Why? It's like seriously? I'm I'm trying to I'm trying to prop this up. You have been trying to get situated for like a half hour. I know. Keep continue talking. I'll put myself on mute. So Piper no. was sick. So Piper was sick. So I was messaging Nick and being like, I'm really worried. I think she might have to go to the vet. She didn't end up having to go to the vet. But anyways, he's like, okay, well, I'll be home soon. This first time he said that was at 830. Second time he said that was at 907. And so it's like 1020. I'm upstairs. I'm already asleep. And all of a sudden I'm like, I kind of wake up and I'm like, God, where the hell is Nick? Like, Nick still isn't home. I was like, he said he was leaving shortly. So I go up 
into the living room and I can kind of see through our blinds and I see that there's a car in our driveway. Oh, did he so, fall asleep? In so the I car. go to the door and there he is. <laughs> half out in the front seat of his car. Car's off, by the way. So he's managed to sh- drive home, turn off the car, but couldn't make it the four steps into our house. Oh my gosh, this is so not something we should be broadcasting. <laughs> Oh, I don't even care. He'll be fine. <laughs> I mean, if you want to look at the silver lining about COVID-19 and the fact that everyone's social distancing, there's probably not many people out on the road. But yeah, yeah. he should not be driving. Well, and he swears that it, he doesn't really feel it until he gets home. Yeah. Oh, my God, dude. That's what the cop says, too. Yeah. yeah. And so my even though maybe this isn't the greatest thing to be broadcasting, one, he'll be fine. Two, if it's a big deal to him, maybe he shouldn't be doing it because then he knows that he shouldn't be doing it if he's that embarrassed by it. And three, this is also a good opportunity to find out that I am not the only one who feels this way regarding his driving and the fact that maybe if you're falling asleep in the car, you probably should be drinking that much or you should be eating more or something. Sorry, Nick, I am on Amber's side on this one. He's going to be so pissed at you. (laughs) Yeah, I don't even care. He's going to flip you off. That's his you go-to know, response. Right? It's just to flip you off. To yes. flip us off. I know, right? So, yeah. So speaking of drinking, drink what are you guys drinking? <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, Miss Ashley. I have Malibu and Diet. And my new <laughs> my new Starbucks cup, it has this jeweled top. Oh. Oh, it does. It's it so does pretty. Like very nice. 90s. Yes. That's very 90s. <laughs> I am drinking a rosé that my boss recommended, um, and I can't remember the name of it right now, but it's It has very a really good. pretty bottle. Yeah, it, the bottle was gorgeous on it. It's like Mel- it's a, Maldovi or Moldova or something. It's a very pretty um, color, too. It's like a light pale pink. Mm-hmm. Well, and this one is I'll really like interesting. Rose. Like a rose yeah. colored. It has more like uh, pear and um, apple flavors to it as opposed to like the strawberries and the watermelon and stuff like that and rosé. It's really good. Very crisp. Yum. Very crisp. Ashley, what are are you you drinking? drinking? I am drinking Cherry 7-Up and vodka. (laughs) (laughs) Nice. I thought I would mix it up. (laughs) Good call. That sounds crazy and out of control. Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> you crack me up, girl. Oh, goodness. So we have things to talk about. Yeah. Um, there were a lot of Bachelor Nation news stories this week. Something that yeah. when I went to go look at our text message string, I was like, that happened since last week's podcast. The Chris Souls and Victoria F. dating. Yeah, that's right. She went to Iowa. To social distance with him for a couple days. Yeah, I find it interesting that she went to Iowa just because of like who we saw her be on Peter's season. Right. But I, I apparently a lot of people hate this couple. I kind of love it. I don't know why, but I do. I don't know who he is, so I couldn't really contribute (laughs) to that conversation. Oh, my gosh. (laughs) He was the bachelor. Yeah. On season yeah, that was 19. Before. It was 2015. Was so he was. Before I restarted. Caitlin Bristow was on his season. Was and then one she of the became girls. Bachelorette. Yeah. Okay. He's also the bachelor that um, was in um, some hot water a couple years ago. Because he for... caused a fatal car accident. Yes. And fled the scene. Yeah, while drinking and driving. While drinking, drinking and, and driving. driving. I was like, right. Ooh, is this a good plug for Nick? Mm-hmm. Everybody thinks it's not going to happen to them, but it does. And she had a DUI in 2017. Oh, they're perfect. Yeah. The the article had a picture of their mugshots together. Oh, that's right. I was trying to figure (laughs) out where the mugshot of her came from. Yes. So that was, I I think it's fine. You know, he's a little older than her. Meh. Let it be. She was like 27, be. right? 27, 28? Yeah. I thought she was on the higher end of yeah of the Peter's Bachelor season. world. Yeah. Of the Bachelor world. So have you guys been following Hannah Brown's TikTok world? Not, not her <laughs> A TikTok. little bit. 
I have not downloaded it. No, she she posts all about a it. lot of her TikToks on her Instagram. She does, yeah. But I'm obsessed with TikTok. But it yeah, is a I've hole. It's a her. black hole. It's insane. I went down it for like two hours the other night, and like I never. I it was insane. You don't have to I, follow people I, to see them. I won't. No. Do it. You just keep scrolling, and that you sent this little, the little baby. Oh my god, the doing the twerking to Baby Shark. Oh my gosh, it was adorable. I also got obsessed with this guy who pulls pranks on his family. That was pretty funny. What you Mm -hmm. sent me, yeah. And I did one to Nick. So this guy, what he does is, I had Nick in front of me, and then I was behind Nick, and I said, "We're gonna take a clear piece of like string, and we're gonna floss." Between ear to ear. So I said, but what we're going to do is you're going to hold this end of the invisible string and I'll hold this end. So Nick is playing along and he grabs this side of the invisible string. And I'm like, okay, now pull. And as he pulls, I smacked him in the face. (laughs) And he was like, oh, I can't believe I fell for that. Did you get it on video? Sadly, no. (gasps) What were you thinking? You should have set it up like a real TikTok. I know. I should have. All right. We're going to record this. I know. It was a sad moment in time. It's, yeah, TikTok is so Uh, much fun. But Hannah Brown and Tyler spent time together. And then she went to her family's house. And now she comes out saying she's single and everything. But I guess people are Venmoing Tyler money for an engagement ring for Hannah Brown. Yeah. Guys, it's not going to happen. Don't do it. You can Venmo me some money if you want. You can Venmo (laughs) Amber, Ashley. Maybe we should set up a two girls and a bottle of wine Venmo. (gasps) That would work. The wine fund. (laughs) The wine fund. The wine fund. (laughs) Maybe that's an idea. Yeah. (laughs) Because we're not making money off this. Maybe people could donate to our wine fund. Yeah, that'd be great. Mm. Then we can expand beyond $10 a bottle. Yes. Well, no, no. We can get more $10 bottles of wine. Because um. <laughs> it's the wine on a dime, y'all. Yeah. Or an urge to splurge. Right. Under 20. Under right. 20. Right. All this bottle was twenty three ninety nine. dollars mm. On under, sale, I bet it was like 19 Under 30. <laughs> under 30. Under 100. Oh, dear God. <laughs> yes. You don't know. We could have some fancy schmancy people that really like expensive wine listening. Yeah. If you're listening and you would donate to our Venmo, just comment down below wherever you're watching this. We'll see it. Do we get comments like in general? (laughs) Yeah. All the time. We get lots of like thumbs up and you girls are awesome. Great content. Uh I can't wait until next week's podcast. Yeah. All the time. People, you should comment. <laughs> right. No, don't be shy. Don't be shy, y'all. I can take some haterade. <laughs> <laughs> um, Maddie Prue was on Off the Vine podcast. I did see that. I saw it, but I haven't listened to it yet. I just barely tried to listen to Peter's episode oh. and Hannah Ann's, and I decided on both of them I couldn't do it. No, I did the same thing. I, I like. I was like, oh, <sighs> nope. Done. After about 35 likes on Hannah Ann in the first Ooh. two minutes, mm-hmm. I was... No, okay. Do we say like a lot? I always think about things like that. I think that we say like, but not as she does. It's not a filler hers, for us. She, no. Yeah. She was going, well, and like, and then I like, and like, I like, I, and I was like, oh my god, no. Stop. Yeah. Yeah. I'm behind on podcasts so hard. I, it's like I I could drive across the country and not catch up with my podcasts. <laughs> yeah. There's so many because I'm not driving anywhere. I know. So how many people are actually listening tonight then? <laughs> Tons. <laughs> Hopefully. Yeah. Hopefully they're like, we still want to listen to three girls mm-hmm. talk about bullshit. I know. I did turn um, – I did recommend our podcast to um, one of the breasties from she was looking for podcast recommendations so i did a shameless plug well you know what a <laughs> great you should listen to this really awesome one uh, and hey, she hey, has hey. the same view as ashley does regarding crime junkie oh mm. good we'll be friends yeah hello amber's breasty friend i do not like crime junkie either you know a great <laughs> way to get our podcast out there is to share it on your own facebook page oh crap at least once per week <laughs> 
Hey, I don't know. know. I never I, go on Facebook. I did not share it, and I still had a friend who texted me and was like, I listened. <laughs> I know. It's because I, I tag you girls. People like Trish. Trish listens to this podcast, and she listens to it when she's been doing walks lately during her quarantine. You know, you can also share the link in your Snapchat. It already what is Snapchat? Snapchat? What the heck are y'all doing with your time? I Marco did... Polo. Yeah, we do Marco Polo. <laughs> and you're not even using that much time for it. We missed you two days in a row. I know, but hey, I did it on Monday night at 6 o'clock. I feel like there's a reminder. I feel like there's a reminder on Ashley's calendar because she pops on every morning at like 9 a.m. Hey, girls. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, we've no. made it on her calendar. <laughs> it's more that like I just hate work and I don't want to start it. No, I'm just <laughs> And like, I'm going to pass time by talking to them. There you go. And I just get so tired by the time I get home that I don't want to do anything. I don't want to look at my phone. I don't want to talk to Nick. I just want to lay on the couch, eat like a cow, and watch TV. <laughs> okay. Well, I'll keep doing the Lord's work for you. <laughs> it's fine. Hey, I did share the podcast a couple weeks ago, and you still <laughs> were like, mm, no. No. I need to get, I need to reacquaint myself with social media. You've I'd never say, been acquainted with social media. I know. Media. I, but I like get in these like moments where I'm you do. totally going to, I'm going to do it. And I get very motivated and then I just fall off. I kind of hate Facebook. It's, it's like I forgot everything I learned. <laughs> I just don't really like Facebook anymore. So I never go into it. That's I fine. Don't either. Really. Okay. Cool. Instagram. How do we share it on Instagram? I, but see, I have more friends on Facebook than I do Instagram followers. So every week we'll find when I publish, when we upload a new podcast, the link is updated in the Two Girls at a Bottle of Wine Instagram account. You can copy that link and put it into your <laughs> Instagram yeah. bio. And I then you p- do hashtag link in bio. I yeah. had this thought several weeks ago. <laughs> oh, gosh. Where are we going? Uh, several months ago actually but i was like oh i need to learn how to do like link in bio and then it never went anywhere edit profile link (laughs) i set my link up i don't remember how i did it but somehow like it doesn't say the name of the episode so i don't have to redo it every week but the link in my instagram bio whenever you click on it it goes to our most recent episode well you probably have it to our main page and our most recent is always at the top yeah that's probably what i did but okay, I, well, that that um, requires someone to click again, and you lose people if they have to click more than once. <laughs> the faces. Is my screen frozen? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Anywho. Wow. Do you want to jump in to listen to your heart? Week two? Let's do it. Yes. All right. I officially love this show. I officially I'm, do not. Really? <laughs> I love it, and I'm so excited for next week. I'm so excited for next week and I wish it was longer and I wish they have more time in the house and I I, I just love it. What why mm, what do you guys love about it? It's real. Like it, the people just seem more real than like the fake people that you end up getting on there. And I also love the music aspect of it and people trying to like find it through that through that avenue and it's not just one douche hole that you have to watch the entire time. And it's not predefined clicks from all of yes. the previous Bachelor seasons. Like, and, like, it, the women... fresh. Everything's yeah. fresh. And the women do kind of, like, bond with each other a little bit more, so it's not, like, the hatred situation. Um, and the men are just different. Like, the men aren't what you normally find either. And so, um, like, Ryan... All the women seem to love Ryan, which I personally don't understand, because they think he looks like a nerd. But, um... I bet he's Why got like, like he's yeah he's kind of preppy smooth yeah and he's, he's got a great voice great hair he reminds me of a Vandy guy like oh uh, yeah that's the kind of guy that would Vanderbilt like kind of geeky oh, smart like kind of like sexy in like the not traditional sense the and type arty, of guy artsy. that would make money in life rather than <laughs> just be a a pretty thing to look yeah. at yeah yeah yeah. So week two starts um, after the rose ceremony. Um, mm-hmm. And really, at this point, we have two couples, Chris and Bree and Jamie and Trevor. Yes. 
And yes. then this week, the guys have the roses. Yes, they do. And Chris Harrison comes in. What did you think of his jacket? I saw lots of different comments. Like, one said he looked like he was, from, he was from the Matrix. I, I don't know. Okay. Um, so he well. comes out and announces that there's going to be people added, which we knew from last week. And right. we knew because we had the, the cast list and there were people that weren't around the first week. Yeah. Um, and they immediately jump into date cards. They do. They give Jamie a date card. Another one, right? Yeah. And she, of course, picks Trevor. Which, technically, she didn't have the date originally. Ryan had the date. Right. Right. So, on I guess the last one, she just happened She didn't to have the date card, but she, yeah. I think that it would have been nice to see another girl that we hadn't seen go on a date. On a date. Yeah. Just my thought. This is true. I agree. But maybe I'm being but super I, negative. Let me know. Give me a negativity check. No, but I think that they had to take Jamie because they knew that Jamie was going to take Trevor and that Natasha was going to come. And you know that they already knew that Trevor the and drama. Natasha knew each other. Yeah. So they had to get it out in the open. So I definitely, that was a, to your point, that was totally a producer choice. Oh, for sure. Yeah. It that makes was set sense. Up. So then they had to Venice Beach where they sit on a blanket and they sing Girl Crush by Little Big Town for tips. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> where did the tips go? Because I said they should be donating it. I bet they did. I bet they didn't. <laughs> I bet they didn't. I bet they kept up. I bet they split it. But here is my question. This is just a technical question. This is my where my thought goes is if I was someone on Venice Beach and I'm walking along and there's this couple singing and there's a camera crew behind them. I'm not donating money to them. Yeah, but based on the fact that everybody wants some kind of fame these days, they probably donated just so that way they could stand there and get on the camera. Right. Or the producers put the money in the tip jar. Right. Yeah. So one of the things she says during like her little interview before they start singing together is that she loves that Trevor lets her... her be the star because so often in relationships she dims her light for other people and I like I understand that that's something that people do but she is 21 <laughs> like and her attitude yeah. on the show she has certainly never dimmed her light I disagree with yeah, that no. statement altogether but she's but anyway, angry. young and that. very self-centered yes. yeah so then after their date they go to a hot tub Yes, they do. And then we go That's back like to... like, overlooking Venice? It was like... Yeah. Because yeah. have you guys been to Venice Beach yes. before? And I have not. So it's like, you've got the beach, and then you've got, like... Sidewalk, like You've got shops. the ocean, you've got sand, you've got sidewalk, and then you have shops. And then above the shops, it's kind of like, have you ever been to um, New Orleans? No. Yes. Like, they... <laughs> Okay, I've been to both places. Okay. <laughs> Your world traveler, like, you? It's kind of like Bourbon Street where they've got, you've got like the houses and things on oh, like the okay. second floor. Gotcha. Where people stand out on the deck and they like stare down on the street. Mm -hmm. And I did want to say one thing, like when they were singing, I feel like Jamie is really straining to sing. Like I feel like she's trying to like make it work. So she's not, I don't, she's not like natural. It's not coming yeah. easy. I don't hate her voice, but it's also not my favorite out of the women that I've heard sing. Mm -hmm. um, she just seemed to really be straining and trying to like push it and make it better than it than it is. I agree. So I don't know anything about singing, so I'm not catching up on those. I like that stuff doesn't like I just I'm like, oh, that's how that person sings. Oh, uh, yeah. She's just she sounds strained like she, she needs does. she needs to work on her breath and she needs to like. Mm -hmm. Work on when she uses a head. Oh, something I learned from the voice. When when she uses a head voice when versus when she's like oh, yeah. up her diaphragm. Yeah. Which right now she's not doing either. Right. And you really want to use your diaphragm because that's what's going to like give you the most sound and the most um, protection with your breath. Protect your breath. Yep. And then we go back to the house and to Natasha, the Latin pop singer, arrives. Yeah. I think she is gorgeous. She's very she pretty. Is. Gorgeous. And she and says, she drops the cheating bomb. Oh. Well, first, she says well, she's seeking a husband and a baby daddy. Said she yes. is oh, not a diva, but she is a diva. Yeah. 
And then <laughs> she's friends with Trevor's ex, and she reveals to the entire house that Trevor cheated on his ex. Okay, now she dropped the cheating bomb. Boom! Boom. <laughs> After she goes, oh, you mean the Trevor from American Idol? What? How? Mm. Right. Like, so that was pretty. I, I wondered about that too. I wrote that down. Did do you think that producers told her she w- he was going to be there? They had to have. Or do you think it was more like a? They know that everybody in here is musically inclined. How many what Trevor are the chances? Music people. Like, it's are one there? thing if they would have been like, "Oh, Peter is out with someone," and she would be like, "Oh my god," from the last Bachelor season. That's one thing. But she'd like be like, oh, Trevor. She's like, oh my God, the Trevor from American Idol. How would you how would you string that together? Right. I'm with you. you. Wouldn't. <laughs> so then Jamie and Trevor return and Natasha does not waste any time. She asks to pull Trevor aside. Well wait, wait, wait. So then they cut over to wait, as soon as she says the cheating thing, they cut over to them in the hot tub where oh, Jamie's yeah. like, Oh yeah, cheating is like uh, it's uh, horrible for me. And it's a deal he, breaker. He like glosses over and he says that they just weren't compatible. That's why he he broke up with his ex. And you can see like he's trying to like Should kind of back something? out of it. Yeah. Like he's yeah. he's trying to play it calmly. Mm-hmm. So but it's not working. So then they're back at the house. Go yes. on. Janet. And um, <laughs> Natasha asked to pull Trevor aside to confront him about the cheating ways. Tre- Trevor doesn't really recall even knowing her and kind of was like hey give me a moment and she's like no now right now follow me thanks so one the whole now again we only see what the producers let us see but first of all we didn't see natasha chat up with any of the men when she arrived right she chatted with all the women and sat there and was like talking about the trevor thing and She never met him. So even though she knows the ex, so this is where I, like, I'm coming in. Trevor could be a total douchebag at the end of this. I Mm -hmm. don't really know. But there's two sides to every story. She Mm -hmm. only knows the ex's side. I'm not saying Trevor didn't do something wrong, but how can you come in there and just, like, do all of this and, like, expect him to come and talk to you when he doesn't even know who you are and you're telling him what to do because you know their relationship so what so well. Like you weren't in the relationship. She doesn't do you know? seem like someone that really minds the P's and Q's of social standards. Yeah, no, this is true. She's just and like we talk if now. He, if he had been dating his ex for two years, two and a half years, and he didn't know that one of her best friends was this Natasha right. girl. Like how like, does that work? That's a little fishy to me. Yeah. It's it was all very strange to me. But anyway, she gets him to cop to he emotionally cheated. Right. Yes. Which she felt was worse than physically cheating. And then the girls at the same time are telling Jamie that yeah. Natasha had told him that he had cheated. Um, and she's you- very, Jamie's very upset because all of the relationships she's ever been in since she's been, what, 16? <laughs> I was going to say, so how ma- how long were each of these relationships? And right. in today's day and age, was it just that they were hooking up and she yeah. didn't realize that they weren't exclusive? <laughs> but yeah. later on, she admits she's never really had a real relationship. Yeah, right. that's why I'm sh- uh-huh. She needs to go. I'm done. <laughs> Um, but I, I what do is, agree with Amber. I don't think we're seeing like a lot that we normally would see on a typical back. There's season. so many people. There's not one yeah. focus with side people. There's so many people that we're trying to focus on at the same time. Now, what are your thoughts in the emotionally versus physically cheating departments? <sighs> so I wrote, let's talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's hard because I think that I personally think that physically cheating is probably more of an issue than emotionally cheating, but only because I think that there's different levels of emotionally cheating. So until I were to know the specifics, I I can't really say. I Yeah. I've also like, I used to be pretty black and white about the way like Jamie is like, Oh, like, cheater is bad and then like no more cheating um but i think 
I've just realized and like growing up and watching like life. situations around me, life has the, people have the, the brain, the mind, the personal self. There are, people have so many different reasons for cheating. I don't think you can yeah. just classify cheating into one bucket. And um, I think that if that happens, you have to look at the relationship and you have to say what's going on with the person, what's going on with the relationship. Um, yeah, because I think it starts emotionally. So I think that's and that's why I think that it's worse when you like cross the line to physically cheating is because if you're already emotionally mm-hmm. connecting with somebody. I think Trevor even said it like there's something that's missing. Mm-hmm. Now it doesn't necessarily mean that it's missing and you should just leave that person, but maybe you need to stop and kind of go and explore where that emotional situation is sitting with somebody else with your current partner and why you're feeling drawn to that other person. Yeah. So I think if you're just having that, uh, that talk and that conversation with somebody, that's the time to take a step back and be like, okay, I'm obviously missing something like either the universe is drawing me to this person or there's something missing that I haven't vocalized in the relationship that I'm currently in that I need to explore and talk about before I actually go down this other road. Um, because you, the majority of the time, it starts with some kind of emotional connection or some kind of like banter before you actually cross to physical. Right. Unless someone's just like blackout drunk on a bachelor party and like that's when it happens. Right. <laughs> right. But I'm with you. Like, I, I think that emotional cheating is like the first step towards yeah it seems to be the first step towards physically cheating and if you're if you don't have the wherewithal to stop and be like what am i doing then it it leads to the physical and i think the only reason trevor stopped and didn't do the physical is because he got caught text messages yeah right yeah I, I mean, and it sounds like he's done a little bit of self-reflecting and said, I should have cut the relationship off sooner than what I did and not put her through yeah. that. So, I, I mean, every situation, in my opinion, teaches you something about yourself, no matter yeah. if it's a good or a bad situation. So clearly he learned something. Mm-hmm. I don't necessarily think he's the bad guy in this situation. I think yeah. Jamie is fucking annoying, but. <laughs> <laughs> She's just 21. We were all annoying when we were 21. Were we? Yes. Yeah, I'm going to say I was. <laughs> because I have comments on that in just a few. But I also would not have gone on a show like this at 21. I think mm. I probably would have. I totally would have. I would have been would like, have. yes, get me in front of that camera. I, oh, if I no. was taller, I would have been trying out for America's Next Top Model and skinnier. Mm. <laughs> yeah. But taller was really, I mean, I wasn't going to let it stop me. <laughs> all five, six of me. Then we break away, and Brie gets a date card. Yes. And she and Chris head to a guitar center? Yes, which is a very big deal for um, musically talented people who can play a guitar. (laughs) But not very romantic. Well, it was to them. Well, it was to them. And I also thought that, I mean, it was cute that it was, so this was the other thing that I really liked about the the show so far is that it's not necessarily, there have been moments where it's been staged with like a ton of people there, but these have truly been special moments for people by themselves. There isn't like all of these other things making them do whatever um, and do ridiculous things. It's come in, explore your music by yourself. Um, And so they're not really being set up yet on how to do things. So I kind of liked that because they kind of get to feel it out on their own. Well, that's why I was going to say that I don't think we're seeing everything because normally on bachelor dates, they have like the day date and then they have the dinner and we've seen like snippets of each of those depending, Mm -hmm. but there it's like, doesn't seem to be following either the same pattern or we're just not seeing it. Yeah. But they have a little jam session, which I thought was, they make up a a moody and raw song together. And Jamie is like, I don't know. Yeah. Br- Brie? Brie, sorry, Brie <laughs> says that she doesn't communicate very well except through song. Yeah, she also dropped the falling in love bomb, and I'm uh-huh. like, it's like day three. Yeah. yeah, I know. Well, and did we know before this that she had already been engaged? Yeah, yes. they did it okay. in her promo. I must have intro. missed that. 
Yeah. Oh, okay. I missed that. And yeah. she was picking out a wedding dress when her ex called the, the oh, wedding that was off. Horrible. That is a horrible story. Yeah, that's that sucks. So it's Tough. it's odd to me that she's falling so quickly. I agree. You would think she would be guarded. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's very strange that she's like, Yeah, I'm falling in love. And he's like, Yeah, I'm falling for you too. And I don't know if he's just saying it because he feels like he has to. Yeah. Or if he and- means it, but I just have to say, he has a great voice. He does. He does. He has enough, like, he has probably one of the best men's voices that I've heard so far. Yeah, he has a very good voice. And then we go back to Jamie and Trevor sitting down. Back to the drama. (laughs) But I I appreciate the fact that Trevor, whether it was triggered by Natasha or not, he still took the moment to kind of go and bring her aside and walk her through it. Like, he confronted it. Mm -hmm. He knew he had to instead of just, like, hoping that no one was going to bring it up. (laughs) Do you think he was obligated to bring it up even if Natasha hadn't? No. Okay. Because despite the fact that I don't like Jamie, I think she also has a point, and I'll probably get some hate for this, but that relationship was however long ago. Every woman is different. Like... Just because someone cheated before doesn't mean that they're going to cheat again, even though that's like the common phrase. I think if you can, like Ashley said, learn from things and kind of take those moments to figure out what was missing in that relationship that made me want to cheat, maybe I can know what I want more from the next one. And I don't think you're going to get flack for that because I don't... I. I agree with her decision. I disagree with her comments all leading up to this, that cheating is a hundred percent a deal breaker, blah, blah, blah. Like I'm 20, I know everything. Clearly it's not. (laughs) Right. That's that's exactly what I wrote. (laughs) (laughs) So they kiss and they're good again. Then Sheridan, Sheridan, Sheridan gets a date card. He of course picks Julia and they yes. head to an iHeart Radio studio where they get interviewed by a DJ. And then Did you notice that one of the people you probably didn't cuz I follow Ali Fanatowski, but one of the people at iHeart Radio that they went on the show for was Kevin Mano, which is Ali Fanatowski's husband. And Ashley has no idea how Ali Fanatowski is. I and... know, I know she's the bachelorette. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's about so, all I know though. I, I didn't catch excited. that part. I like Kevin. Kevin. He's so cute. At first, I thought they were on a podcast. I must have fast forwarded a little too much. <laughs> it was hard to tell that they went radio. Yeah, it was hard to tell that they went into iHeartRadio. Um, and then it gets really awkward really fast. She admits to kissing other people in the house. Well, so is that what you're talking once, about? Yeah. Is that okay? So before we get there, or is that? I don't know. Is this? Before or after Rudy, they, like, panned to Rudy and Matt. Because she does um, talk about, because I know that it gets real awkward, and I feel so bad for Sheridan. Um, I know. But he deserves way over. better than Julia. Oh, yeah. Team Sheridan. Wow. That's that's a change. Weren't you Team Julia last episode? No, I just like Sheridan and Julia. Oh. Yeah. I'm having a hard time with Julia as the um, episode moves She forward. wants her yeah, cake and she wants to eat it too. I kind of want to punch her in the face. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But like, she has a great singing voice. She does have a very she good does. singing voice. She does. I hate to admit that. She has a beautiful yeah. voice. Yeah. It's buttery in all the right places. But so side note, I also think that they kind of remind me of Hannah and Dylan on Bachelor in Paradise. Where the boy's chasing because, the girl and the girl's like, I don't know, I don't know. Right. And she keeps going back and forth between, you know, um, yeah, Sheridan and Brandon. And Sheridan is just like all in and he just loves her and he's all about her. And Dylan was kind of that way with Hannah. But Hannah still needed to kind of work through everything. And I feel like Julia thinks that she needs to work through everything. Despite the fact that she continuously says that she has feelings for Sheridan. So... Yeah, and they sounded good I together. Don't she get wants that. her cake and she's eating it too. She wants I get that. to keep Sheridan I think, in the wings. I think I just don't like the the stepping on people thing that she's yeah. going to end up doing. Mm-hmm. I know. Agreed. That, that crushed me a little bit. So um but yeah, so wait, what was your thing about Rudy and Matt? Well, 
I was just saying, like, Rudy is driving me nuts. Like, I originally thought that I was going to like Rudy, and I want to smack her every time she's on the screen. Because she, like, pulls Matt aside, and she's trying to, like, grill him on his feelings for her because she just wants a rose. Like, I don't – she doesn't have a connection. She just wants the fucking rose. See, I still think she has a connection to Matt. I love Matt. I think her pride was – her pride was hurt. Her pride was hurt when she didn't get chosen for the date. Are you talking about when she was, like, flirting with him and, like, ends up slapping him? Because that's later. No, no. I don't. She takes him out on the balcony. Got it. And starts, like, asking him about their feelings and what it really means. Oh, yeah, you're right. They did have, like, a little side chat. It didn't. It didn't. It was weird. Stick in my memory or in my notes. Uh, It was weird (laughs) to me. But it's because I'm currently against Rudy. See, I like her. I think she's very relatable. Because yeah. I think she's got a lot of emotions and she doesn't know like how to control them. And I think that's, that's why statement. I think that's why she's relatable. But she um I don't not she's not my favorite female, but I don't dislike her just because I like see pe- pieces of myself in her. <laughs> right. Well when I see it like going I keep comparing everything to Bachelor in Paradise. But like Bibiana, and then um, also, what is the blonde that always constantly comes back? But they're constantly like moving from guy to guy. And oh my god, like, no, oh, I hate her. Like, I Elise know who you're talking about. Her name is? Annalise. Annalise, yes. the sad, sad girl. That's who they remind me of, where they're like, I just want this connection and I don't know what to do, and I'm just going to go back and forth to all these different men. So, yeah. like, so should we just should we continue on what's going on? Because I have lots of comments on the whole Rudy situation. We just want to well, jump into that right now. Mariana and <laughs> Ruby arrive. Oh yeah, and then yeah. Savannah gets a date card. She picks she Brandon, does, yes. and they head to Dresden. And there's an older couple that's been together a very long time that are performing. What are their oh, names yeah, that's again? The jazz Club. And Mel, wait, Mel had a breakdown. Oh my God, Mel was so upset. You missed that part. Mm. Mel Uh, didn't register, like when she did, anyway. One thing I caught during this is that she said something about two weeks. So are they only in the house for two weeks? This entire experience is only two weeks for them? That makes sense, because it's only six episodes. Mm Mm-hmm. Wow. So back to Bree saying she's falling in love on day three. What? (laughs) Yeah. No wonder. It's a pressure cooker. They got to go. They got to go. Yeah. <sighs> I don't know. Mel was kind of one of my favorites going back to the whole Savannah and Brandon thing. But this episode, she really broke down for me and I was kind of out of it. She got crazy. Very fast. She got a little psycho. Pressure yeah, cooker crazy. boiled her over. Yeah. And um, like on the oh, go this ahead. date with Savannah and Brandon, mm-hmm. I, you know, Savannah's like, you know, it's really solidifying for me. That, you know, I have feelings for you. And he's like, yeah. Mm-hmm. And, like, you can kind of just, like, he agrees with her. But you can also kind of see that he kind of drops and, like, ser- shit seriously. Because he is a hot commodity. as Mel He is a playboy. And he has a great play. voice. Okay. Maybe it's, like, the voice that they're all attracted to. And the personality. Like, the yeah. doesn't give a fuck personality. Because he's the guy who's the... um Iraqi war veteran. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, I don't really think he's that attractive. I don't either. So it yeah, has to be the voice It's or gotta something. be the voice and the personality because he's not attractive. Because right. I don't understand why all the women are flocking to him. Right. Well. So Savannah and Brandon sing Fever and I, I liked their performance. I really did. Uh, no? I liked it. You but, you guys are the ones that are in it for the the singing, I, but I was like, I really I, oh, this is nice. I just this thought is, there was another song that could have been better for their voices and well, could have. I don't know. Go ahead. I think the song was chosen by the couple because that's what they needed to play. But right. to or your something point, that ABC had the rights to. One of my <laughs> biggest pet peeves is when people do covers and they do it intentionally slower than like the beat of yes. the original. And that drives she, me nuts. she was singing it slower and it was bothering me like nobody's business. Yeah. Like she was trying, it was just trying to put too much of your, like, it's great to put a little spin on it and make it your own, but that wasn't really an opportunity to make it your own. And she was just, it was just trying too hard. I, I couldn't do it. They had great voices. I just, it well, wasn't at, for me. You're at a club doing a cover. You're not, right. you're not exactly. like being challenged to take a song and make it your own. 
Yes. And so. they go back to the house where Julia, who realizes that Brandon's cool. on a date, then tries to end things with Sheridan. I, I didn't. I know. It was weird. Brandon's on a and date. It, Why would you not try and solidify things with the one guy that is completely into you instead of ending those this, things? I think this is the point, though, where Julia believes that she's better looking than Savannah and she's got more going for her than Savannah or anybody else in the house. So she's saying, you know what, Sheridan, like. I really want to explore this because she feels that she can make it work with Brandon. Brandon and Savannah, Savannah are both from Nashville. Gorgeous. So I love Savannah. Savannah is one she of my is. favorite women in the house. She's me beautiful. Too. So I just think that Julia thinks in her head that she's more attractive. And the funny thing is, is last Savannah. week, Julia played the, oh my gosh, I can't believe so many guys are talking to me. Very like right, modest. Yeah, she and now she's like, I'm, yeah. I'm it. I'm who he should mm -hmm. be with. Yeah, yeah, that that humble pie she was eating just disappeared. Right. And then it was funny that Rudy and Ruby were singing Love is a Losing Game at the piano. I know. Well, there that always seems great. to be that song. Like, they're always seeming to be singing a song that, like, goes with the moment. But I also thought that those two seemed like drama together. Mm -hmm. I think that they should become a lesbian couple because they seem perfect <laughs> for each other. <laughs> so that's my two on. So now we're leading up to the rose ceremony, and people are freaking out. They yes. are freaking now I will out. Say, I did not notice Chris Harrison's jacket when he came in the first time, but at the cocktail party, he looked really thin. Like, I don't know if it was like the angle of the camera, but I was like, he looks like he's got his weight. Huh. Or it's just because I want to lose weight, and so I'm mad when everybody else looks thinner. <laughs> <laughs> There's that. <laughs> But anyways, and I also put that you know that in the end, like Sheridan and Brandon will be the last people to choose. Mm -hmm. Which they were. Uh, they were close to. They weren't, but they were close to it. I mean, Sheridan was like second to last or last or something. I think Sheridan was last. Sheridan was yeah. last. Oh, yeah, you're right. And then Brandon was like third to third. last or something. And Gabe is in, was in between Brandon and Sheridan. Oh, and then Mel. Mel. So, like, the cocktail party starting, she and Mel, so like, brings awkward. Brandon aside. It was, I, it was so hard to not fast forward, because it was so hard to watch. So, so uncomfortable. One thing I've learned from this episode specifically is how to tell when people are kissing back just to get out of the situation. Yeah. As opposed <laughs> to when they actually enjoy it. <laughs> it was, it was tough. I'm not going to lie. There were a lot of, like, uh, kiss backs. Yeah. <laughs> and Mel said that she was terrified of Brandon and then kisses him. Like, that's In, like, the most awkward juvenile. way. She was like, ha, ha, ha. And she leans in and kisses him. And I'm like, whoa. whoa. And, it like, felt early... like she was, like, 15. Mm -hmm. yeah. Very juvenile. Earlier in the night, which I found that I had put down somewhere, but, like, Mel and Brandon are talking at some point and they're talking about their love languages, I think. Or was that last episode? No, I no, that was this episode. This and she basically says like, so he says his is physical touch. Yep. And then she was like, yeah, I don't, I, I don't do that. I don't do but that. But now she's trying. So now this is like the typical stereotype where the woman is trying to be something she's not just to get a man that she likes, which that's never how it should work. You should be allowed to be you and the man likes you for you so this is i think that's why it was also more awkward because he doesn't she doesn't like physical touch but she was doing it so much to try and like get it's him to like catch. her good catch oh couldn't and sheridan hears that mel and brandon kiss and all of a sudden he assumes julia's out of <laughs> that picture yeah he's, he's so wrong. sweet um <laughs> He's so naive. And then yeah. Brandon and Julia sit down together, and Brandon tells Julia that he's interested in Savannah. So that's when Julia's bad side comes out. She starts. I know she like yeah, she under the bus. Yeah, I, I was I like, what the fuck? Saying Savannah's emotionless or leans toward that idea. What the hell? It's been three days. I wouldn't be sharing my innermost secrets with you either, Julia. Right. Right. Oh, that made me just like Julia so much more. Yeah, I'm definitely. So when we first started, I didn't love her. Um, I also didn't like her from her promo video. You guys both like really liked her. And I, I was did. like, okay, well, she's like, okay, I guess she's like, nice. And now I'm back to I don't like her. 
Yeah, I. I mm. But they they go ahead and make out. Ashley was that a was that a, a good make out? Like, did he want that? Yeah. Okay. He, <laughs> he kissed back. <laughs> and then it it pans over to Rudy and Matt. Well, first right? Natasha grabs Ryan. Yeah, oh, Natasha that's right. Grabs Ryan, which I thought was really odd, but she seemed to be really drawn to him, and so but you, I couldn't tell. Is it because you just want a rose and you want to stay? Or do you really like him? Because we never saw her connect with any men. Right. So it was just an odd scenario for me. Right. But then it goes over to Rhodey, who I put down. She's kind of slutting around with everyone to just try and get a rose. So <laughs> I... She slaps him. I have so many comments. Okay, so first she goes to Ryan and yeah. says... So she tells the camera, I have a thing for Matt and I have a thing for Ryan. And so she goes and finds Ryan and kisses him because she just wants to see if there's anything there. Mm-hmm. And it was the most awkward situation I ever watched. Yeah, it is not even more awkward than like the Mel situation. Yeah, like, that yeah. was pretty awkward. And then she's crying to what's her name? The 12 year old. Um, <laughs> yeah, Jamie. Jamie. <laughs> and she's like, I'm really upset because blah, blah, blah. I just, I just, kissed him and you know like i feel like i i think what she was saying without saying it was i feel like i messed things up with matt in the uh, in the original situation here and he's the one i've actually had a connection with from the beginning and i don't know how to go about that and so um what's her name the 12 year old (laughs) jamie jamie Jamie, thank you (laughs) she's like you need to go talk to him so she goes and talks to him and i'm pretty sure by this time Miss Rudy is like fucking drunk. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So drunk Rudy's coming out and she's being a little more aggressive than she probably should be. And that's why she slaps him. <laughs> and the reason why I relate to this is because I feel like I've been there where I've been very Do you nervous. hit Pat after drinking? No. But like <laughs> in in my history, like I, I think I've been very nervous around a guy before and probably drank and probably did things that I was not expecting to. Just sure. because, like, like I couldn't control my nervous energy. People, yeah, like, do something stupid like that. Punch like, them. them or, like, yeah. Steal their identity. No. <laughs> okay, just checking. <laughs> no, but, like, you you know, like, you'll go to, like, yes. flirt with them. Like, flirtatiously touch them yeah. or whatever, and you're drunk, so you're a little bit more aggressive. You end up picking their nose. And then you accidentally <laughs> touch their dick and... <laughs> So this is just why I found her relatable because I was like, I, I feel her nervous energy in this entire situation. Got it. So now and we, for the go record, ahead. he kissed her back. Like that was the, he wanted to kiss her. Like he, he, well, he, he does. And I, I think he likes her, but she rejected him in the hot tub. Yeah. yeah. She made like the number one um, error or whatever it's called. <laughs> Could on you guys Bachelor hear Pat? Just no. Now. Oh, thank God. He had the biggest bird ever. <laughs> I thought you were going to say, like, <laughs> fart or something. I thought he swore. I don't know. <sighs> no, it was a very <sighs> large burp. Yeah, I so... I think Matt likes the challenge, though, that Rudy brings. Yeah, on all aspects. She's just kind of a crazy fi- firecracker. Yeah. Could be. I love Matt, though. I think he is. Sexy. I love Matt. He is. Got a good personality. I just personality. don't think Rudy's right for him. Mm-hmm. So Hopefully. now we have the rose ceremony. Yep. Where Chris. Start it with the easy ones. Yeah. Chris gives his rose to Bree and Trevor gives his rose to Jamie. Yep. And then Matt's up and he gives mm. his rose to Rudy. Mm-hmm. Yep. And then Ryan gives his <laughs> rose to Natasha. Very random. Yeah. Danny gives his rose to Becca. Who are these people? No. I know, like, we've never seen any interactions between Danny and Becca, but they've chosen each other the last, like, the I two know. ceremonies that we've seen. So yes. I'm always like, who the fuck is these? Like, they I've must never be seen boring. Them. Like, I've never even seen them talk. This is yeah. why I want more. Like, I, I think yeah. that this is a good ABC producers who are listening. This is a very good setup for a show. We just want more. Yeah, we leave us a see. comment as to why this has been happening. <laughs> we want yeah. to see the uh, other actions and the couples and the interaction. Um, and then yep. Brandon gives his rose to Savannah. 
which, so I don't necessarily like Savannah with Brandon, but I love that he chose Savannah because I love Savannah. Mm -hmm. I like Savannah too. And he didn't choose Julia. Right. Which was very nice. I liked that. And then then Gabe Gabe to Ruby. Chooses Ruby, which I thought was strange. But again, we haven't seen him talk to anybody. Ruby just seems like trouble. She seems like she's there to cause some kind of trouble, but maybe I'll end up liking her. I don't know. We haven't seen enough. Yeah. Sheridan Sheridan gives his rose to Julia. Which I wanted to just fucking barf. Right. But in Sheridan's mind, Brandon's making out with other people, so Julia's all his. Yeah, but I think that there's still a piece of Sheridan that he's just not listening to. And he's like, this isn't going to work out for me. I mean, they come in the back. And she's crying. Like, she's upset that she just got a rose. And then she hugs Brandon. And Brandon is like, oh, I'm so glad you're still here. And Sheridan's like, awesome. Fucking great. So you just fucked yourself, buddy. And I love Sheridan. But still not a good job. Not Mm -hmm. a good choice. So Mel, Mariana, and Cheyenne go home. Yes. Yes. And Brandon tells Julia that they can figure their whole thing out. Like, Brandon, yeah, he's such a player. No. If and I was Julia, no. Chris Harrison gave... If you were Julia, you wouldn't be as skankowitz as she is. But um, Chris Harrison said, he was like, be sure about who you're picking this week because Next week now it's they're going to start coupling up. Mm-hmm. Yep. And performing together. Which is why I'm so excited for next week. It's going to be great. <laughs> The so one, I love JoJo and Jordan, mm-hmm. so I'm very excited that I get to see them, but I'm really excited that, like, more of the music is coming out and that we get to see more of them, like, singing together and how that grows them as a couple. Yep. I'm excited to see Caitlin and Jason. Oh, right. Yeah, they'll be there, too. <laughs> Dang. And I really love them. I just... Meh. Uh, <laughs> it's going to be good. I'm glad it's only six weeks. Matt. Have you followed him on Instagram? <gasps> That's a good idea. Oh, my God. I haven't followed anyone on Instagram. <laughs> I haven't even thought about it. I'm telling you, I haven't, like, been on my phone. Like, I get home, and I'm like, I just, I can't. That's cool. <sighs> Ashley's doing it right now. I know. I was like, where the hell did Ashley just go? We're What's in the middle of a podcast. I don't know. I don't, yeah, I'm Google Matt. it. Google. Which, Matt. By the way, Ashley listen to your heart. I don't think Ashley's dropped an F-bomb yet, and we're, like, almost I did. Done. No, 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 I did. You guys just did didn't you? bring attention to it. Yep. I think I'm so used to the word fuck that I just don't <laughs> hear it when other people say it. Oh, crap. What are you guys listening to? I don't, you know, I'm not listening to anything new. Oh, actually, that's not true. I did download some new songs from Brown and, or Brown and Gray, which they're not a huge singing group, um, but I love Brown and Gray. Um, I follow them on Instagram and I've watched them live a couple times. They do a live show like every Sunday, I think mm-hmm. on, um, Instagram. I just, I love them so much. So I downloaded that. Um, I don't think I've listened to anything new though. I downloaded one margarita by Luke Bryan. I love that. Oh, song. you did? I so love that song. It's so <laughs> mindless. <laughs> I know. I love his stuff. It just automatically comes to my Apple music because uh-huh. I, added subscribe. his album mm. yeah and it was supposed to go live this month but he decided that with everything going on he would push it back so he's not going live until the fall but yeah i or, just i love um, it's a good like spring summer's like when i was sitting it in is. the backyard on sunday i was playing that song on my headphones not out loud so my my husband would hate it but um yeah oh, i just love it and if you watch the video his wife's in it and his mom's in it oh my god i love so... his mom and his wife funny i might honest i think i might honestly love his wife and his mom more than i love him i agree i think they are really so funny nice job (laughs) ashley five minutes ago (laughs) i know he only has six thousand followers what did you find the right account yeah (laughs) okay it's got abc promo videos (laughs) there you go that's how you know do we have a positive poly oh we do Wait, are we going through... Are you guys watching anything new? We finished Ozark. 
Holy cow! Oh, did you? The end of episode or the end of season three is whoa! It's a it's a I mm, it's dark, but I love it. Great! I may I may actually watch that one just because you say it's dark. I don't I don't I want to watch it because it's dark. All my friends say it's dark too. They're like, "This is much darker than we would anticipate you watching." I'm like, "It Wait, is." I had to start I've, slow. That's what I, I've heard. Ozark is very dark. That's why I'm very surprised you watched it and liked it. It was my husband that made me watch it, and the story is so well done that that's what kept me going back. Nice. Hmm. Little fires everywhere. I think the last episode drops tonight. Oh, I need to watch that or b- drops today. I need to watch that. I haven't watched it yet. Mm. Yeah, I want to watch that. What are you guys watching? Nothing. I'm going. Uh, Why did finishing. you ask then? Keep going because on. I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah, see, I just watch the same shit over and over again. Like, tonight is Masked Singer, and it better not be a fucking sing along again because that was bullshit last week. That was such bullshit. I was, I was pissed. so mad. So it better much. be fucking two hours tonight. I didn't watch last fucking- week. After you guys. <laughs> commented i just deleted it from my dvr i was like well and i was a little <laughs> drunk after last week too so i was like so was super mad oh yeah you guys were both tipsy after last <laughs> yeah, week. yeah we were yeah i was like it was, it was, it was a rough night did your husband's roofie you probably because <laughs> <laughs> i was like huh weird. Nick's never actually seen me wasted oh so. yeah i believe that yeah I just keep so telling Amber, did. I can't wait to get her wasted. It takes a lot. I bet, she, I bet she would be very loud and mean. No, actually, I'm hilarious. Everybody I loves was, drunk Amber. I, was I say, feel like Amber one time on like the a, pod... The why three, do you always think I'm so mean? The three bottle night. You were like calling me the B word every other word. So everybody loves that because it's sarcasm. It's funny. You're hilarious. I don't actually mean it. <laughs> I think Amber Moore gets like baby voice and like yeah. becomes like like Yeah. <laughs> I just always have to like take care of everyone else around me so I never actually get wasted. So it's very rare. Actually maybe Nick has seen me wasted once. But you said he was also wasted, so he doesn't remember. Yeah. <laughs> that is true. That's very true. So positive Polly? I'm on it. Okay. In every day, there are 1,440 minutes. That means we have 1,440 daily opportunities to make a positive impact. Ooh. You spread that glitter. That's right. I have the wine book. Woohoo! Bring it on. It's number 34. Poach fish or chicken in a white wine court bouillon. That's the title of it. <laughs> why? Why? Why don't you like this one, Amber? Do you not I like don't know. fish? I just don't. I do. I actually love fish. Well, it says I love it, fish. simmer half a bottle of wine with a liter of water, chopped onions, carrot, celery, three bay leaves, and a little wine vinegar. After thirty minutes, allow to cool, drain the liquid, and poach your fish in it. Even after this, the court bouillon can be used to make a fish soup. I think this is a French style of cooking. I hate anything that has the word poached in it. <laughs> the slimy it's, factor? Yeah. Ew. No. Poached just yeah, means... Ew. Poached just no, means ew. it is... It's basically like boiled. Which makes it a it's little cooked. slimy. The po- no, I, a poached it. egg makes me want to vomit. <gasps> poached eggs are the best. They're just like fried eggs, but no grease. Nope. Disgusting. I'm not, I don't know. I don't know Everyone has the right to their own opinion. Yeah, not really. <laughs> <laughs> oh uh, my god! I'm just kidding. You cannot like poach things, and I'll just think you're weird. But whatever. That's cool. I think you're weird about things too. But we love each other. Do- I. Th- we can be different and still love each other. Yes. Yes. All right, girls, thank you so much for joining me on the podcast. We will be back again next Wednesday, um, and we'll be back with an all-new recap of Listen to Your Heart Yay. week three. And, and um, yeah, 
Everyone be safe out there. Share us with your friends. Please. Comment. Comment. Yep. <laughs> you can't share coro- you shouldn't share coronavirus, but you can share two girls in a bottle of wine. Ooh, good Ooh, one. That is good. All right. Bye. Bye. Bye.